the transfer portal is open for about a dozen more days. So does Oregon need to add more players there? Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked On Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your normal one source to stay up to date with our beloved Ducks. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Finally got my man Ryan Winter back on the show at Sports Chat 503 on YouTube. Many of you know him from his show over there. There or his time here, or perhaps a little bit of both. And Ryan, it is an interesting time, but also a sad time because we don't have Oregon football for like eight months. Yeah, it's all year though now, bro. <laughs> it's all year. Yeah, the, the news, the news, and the storylines are certainly year round. No, and the way the calendar no breaks too. There. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Like the way the calendar breaks. Like it is. It, it does feel everything kind of gets squeezed there with that now yeah. the early signing day. I wish they kind of would do away with. Yeah, the I, I agree. And just have the regular one in February where everything kind of yep. opens up. I I, I agree. Especially I the, for those teams on the early bowl game and everything. I mean, it's just it's a weird deal. It is. It is strange, and I don't think the people who design that sort of stuff understand what it takes to run a college football program and. I, I think that's unfortunate. Maybe one day it'll change. I, too, would do away with the early signing window. But the transfer portal is is still open, and I want to get into this, Ryan, because there's so much we can oh, yeah. uh, we can discuss on, on that front. So yeah. as you look at Oregon's roster right now, the position groups that, that I assess and say, I don't think a transfer needs to be added here. I think there are a few. Quarterback, obviously. You got Bo Nix. You got Ty Thompson. Novosad is an early enrollee that will probably play in the spring game, which is exciting. Uh-huh. Running running back, we've almost got too many bodies, you know, because they added uh, another one on the early signing window, and they've got a bunch, and Dowdle's in there. Wide receiver, I think they're fine via the portal, at least. They could maybe add one more, but I don't think they need to offensive line i think they're fine cornerback corner not cor- not not safety not all defensive backs but cornerbacks i don't think they they need to add anyone else do you think i missed any in there i mean i don't know i think maybe the linebackers is a, is, is, is an area where maybe they 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 feel like they need something but other, other than that you're you're right but i would also say a lot of those places you had the transfers last year the reason why you don't need them now is because they already transferred, <laughs> you know, Bo Nix, Bucky, you know, Noah running backs. I mean, there's, and even guys on the front, right. Uh, defensive line. I think there's, I think there's always I, in my mind, there's a couple positions that every year it's nice to get a transfer. Okay. Offensive line, defensive line, because it's nice to get a guy who's already been on the weight and meal program for two, three right. years. That's a nice one. Okay. Running backs, I think can really make a jump. Running backs can, I think, can go from one team to another team and make a huge difference and become almost a different whole player based on scheme, based on a better offensive line, based on maybe a better match with a quarterback or whatever. I think it's harder for wide receivers because I think a wide receivers, there's there's plenty of them. There's it's hard to fit into the X or the Y or the Z or the wherever the depending on scheme or everything else like that. And I think that same thing goes for corners. I think corners are a guy, DBs are a guy who, um, you know, depending on where they were at, there might be a reason why they weren't playing. Or unless they're really good, they're probably not leaving. So it's like this idea of like, you know, a lot of times the transfer portal guys, to be honest, are not necessarily the guys that are getting all the playing time at all the schools. Some of them are. Some of them are a position, you know, you see a guy at the end of his career want to go change thought, whatever. But in a, in a DB sense, a lot of guys say, hey, I might not get a chance next year. I'm going to hit the portal. I'm going to go to a place where I can get a better chance at it. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a better player than what you already have. So I think there's sometimes where maybe it's more difficult for corners. Now, safeties, I think, can really flourish in the portal because there's a lot of guys who maybe are just a little bit of a tweener, right? They're not a corner. They're not a safety. Maybe they, in one system, they're Bennett good. William, Bennett Williams, by the way, falls Huge. into that category. Huge. Now, you know, he was pretty good on, on every level, but still, like, great 
addition on day one, like immediate, immediate impact. And so, you know, if you look at like who the guys that they've already brought in, you know, they bring in a wide receiver, they bring in offensive tackle inside uh, lineman, offensive lineman. They bring in a corner, bring in another wide receiver <clears throat> linebacker. You know, I'm really impressed with how these guys have gone about the transfer portal because the transfer portal guys who they brought in have added immediate value to the team. And I think that's what they were looking at when they go to the transfer portal. I think this year, though, a little bit different than other years because you still have this extra COVID year that you're dealing with. And so rosters are really strange right now uh, when they're trying to get guys out and bring guys in. It can kind of be a difficult process. It, it can be. And it's a logistical nightmare sometimes yes. because I think as we record this, Ryan, I don't know if you know differently. I'm pretty sure Oregon's actually over their scholarship limit, Oh yeah, w- w- which means guys have – and it's not surprising. You look at the – incoming 2023 recruiting class it's massive and they're still going after guys right Right. they could still add more transfers i think they might add one or two more at least in this window but that means they're expecting other guys to leave the program they're expecting or or maybe they're going to encourage guys uh, to do that you know someone asked on so yeah someone asked on on my pac-12 channel or uh, i host locked on pac-12 if you did not know youtube wherever you get your podcasts Someone asked about the scholarship limit and whether or not coaching staffs can, you know, basically cut players. And the answer to that question is no. Right. Once a scholarship has been issued to a player in any sport, it has to be honored unless there is a, a disciplinary matter of extreme negativity that, that 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 would allow for that scholarship to then be pulled back. You'll have coaches, I imagine you know, go to players and say, hey, we think you should seek your options elsewhere. We can't force you to, but you're not going to be playing here. But whether or not players actually decide to leave is on them, right? right? It's it's their decision and their decision only. And only when they leave does the scholarship reopen. You can't take away half of it and give half scholarship to another player. You can't cut them. You can't, you can't do anything like that. It's not the NFL. Once you've given a scholarship... You you do have you do have to honor it, but bringing it back to the the transfer discussion, you you mentioned linebacker Ryan, and I like a couple of the guys who didn't really play. Or I don't know if they played it all this year. Devin Jackson, Harrison yes. Taggart, yes. twenty twenty two recruits redshirted this year, I, I believe, and I'm especially a big fan of Devin Jackson because he's got elite speed, and, and I think Oregon's defense at times this year show that they are missing that a bit. But mostly when you lose Noah Sewell, who has good, not great, but good speed, you need someone who can replace that. I think Flo's injury diminished his speed a a little bit. And I I think when you look on paper, it might appear that the Ducks, having already added Justin Jacobs, are set at the linebacker position when it comes to the transfer portal. But I, I I have a theory that they are not going to be. And I don't think that it's too far fetched. I obviously want your thoughts, but I obviously want to tell you all about Built Bars as well. That's how I bet these guys are bulking up on the weight and meal and, you know, all that sort of program stuff that football teams get their players on. I bet you they're using Built Bars, and if they're not, they should be, because if you want something that's a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try Built Bar. I've got them loaded up in my pantry. They're in my golf bag anytime, anywhere I need them. I'm playing golf probably as you're listening to this show. There's a really high chance, no matter when you're listening to it, that I'm golfing. And guess what? To keep myself fueled out there, I got Built Bars in the bag. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, the amazing flavors go on and on. Go get yours wherever you is easiest walmart sam's club built.com you can find them in a lot of different places only 130 calories four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein go get your latest order of built bars today and thank me later so ryan here's my theory that the, the ducks add justin jacobs noah sewell justin Flo, gone one to the nfl one to the portal down to arizona right Jeffrey Bossa is there. He played very well, by the way, in the Holiday Bowl, one of his better games of the year. That sack he had was the sort of dynamic move that I thought we'd see more of from him this year. But when you look at PFF, or if you just look at the eye test, he struggled a lot this season. Sure. And I, I think the, the prospect of Harrison Taggart, Devin Jackson, Keith Brown, who emerged, 
could totally see it. But Justin Jacobs is coming off of an injury. And let's say they think Keith Brown is ready. I think they could go get another portal linebacker here who's more in the Jeffrey Bossa mold. Because if you looked at what, what the linebacker pairings were this year, can you think of a time when Noah Sewell and Justin Flo were on the field at the same time? Probably in the red zone. Red, red zone, but that's it. They played Bossa and Sewell together a lot, or Bossa and Flo, because one is more of a run stuffer and one is a little bit better in coverage. That being Bossa because he's smaller, he's leaner. That's why he struggled against the run, didn't grade very well. Jacobs, I think is maybe a little bit of both, but I, I could just see them wanting to have another body at the linebacker position, Ryan, who they know can plug and play and be at least average, if not above average, at the linebacker position. What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, if you look at linebacker, I think linebacker was the position that maybe people thought you would see a little bit more of uh, or more from uh, with Dan Lanning and Tosh Lupoy and all the – defensive minds that came onto this team and you thought maybe the linebackers would be really hot on paper. People were saying these are the, some of the best linebackers in the country tandem or whatever. And then you just didn't see the same kind of production you thought you would see. I, I tend to think that, you know, both Noah and Justin are both, you know, much better run stoppers. They're, they're uh, kind of quick, not, or they're fast, not quick kind of guys. Like they can get moving, they can get down the field, but they don't really react that quickly. Uh, they don't really open their hips and open back up into pass protection that well. They're not that flexible. Pass They're coverage, much, you mean? Or pass coverage. I mean, what did I say? Pass, pass <laughs> protection. Pass protection. Would be very odd for a linebacker to be in pass protection. <laughs> but, you know, when they go back and drop back, it's just you can kind of see it in their body language that they're just they're just a little stiff and they're not that comfortable there. Whereas opposed to when you saw Bossa, you saw somebody who could really get after it. Right. You know, they have Elijah Williams as well from that class last year who, you know, might be able to give you something, but yeah, you're right. I think linebacker is also another spot that you probably look at at the portal and say, Hey, you could do some really good things. Another guy who's got a couple years on the meal plan, got a couple years in the weights, sees the game a little differently, maybe moves positions. You know, sometimes that guy, that middle linebacker is not the same guy he was coming out of high school at middle linebacker. Some of those guys go to outside backer, they get moved over. You know, Bossa came down from safety. I mean, so it's like it's a weird kind of a situation when you find yourself in the middle. The most important thing is for the Ducks is they've got to be able to stop that tight end over the middle or the wide receiver across. When they cross those wide receivers, my heart would sink every single freaking time. That five-yard, ten-yard crossing pattern, it was like every single time was open. And it was hard for the Ducks to kind of find a spot where they could cover that with the safeties and push up and not get burned over the top and, or be able to have the linebackers go back and be able to protect all that land in the middle. It's a tough thing to ask any position to cover that much grass, but you're right. The speed of Bossa, the body style of Bossa, that's the future of this team. I think the linebackers are going to be much more rangy, um, faster, uh, possibly lower to the ground, uh, maybe not as tall. I don't know. But you're gonna you're you're definitely gonna see guys fly around the football on the on, on the uh, middle linebacker group, and I do also think that tend to think that you're gonna have to find a way to put more pressure on the quarterback with the linebackers, because that was the other thing was it was kind of missing this year was you didn't really get you got a lot of quarterback hurries you had you had pressure but there wasn't a lot of like straight quarterback sacks coming through the middle putting the pressure on the offensive line and and to me as an offensive former offensive lineman. That to me is the hardest play for the offensive line to block. That's like that delayed blitz from the linebackers straight up the gut. Which Oregon did a lot this year. They did. Lan Lan Lanning they loves did. the delayed blitz. And, and remember, they they also did the simulated pressure, right? They talked about the simulated pressure and the delayed blitz, both of which the linebackers were very involved with. And it felt like they just uh, they just really couldn't cash in on that as much as they needed to. They did at certain times. They put pressure on certain uh, quarterbacks at certain times and, and, and made key plays. But I do think that the linebacker core is something that you could look at as if you're grading everyone across the board, probably had a lower grade than you expected. Yeah, and I, I think Noah Sewell was really successful as a blitzer this year. When you go back and watch the games, he, he uh, could yeah, just he straight bull explode. rush a guy. Yeah, I mean, he he can blitz off the edge. I almost I almost thought at one point in time, you know, with, with the troubles that Oregon had getting pressure off the edge, they would just move Justin Flo or Noah Sewell 
to an edge position I, specifically. I, I, I wouldn't Jacob. have been opposed to that. I wonder if they do that with Jacob with with Justin Jacobs sometimes. He has that body type. He's like six foot four. Well, I mean, and that's he's, what they were saying. Huge. And that's what they were saying about Noah was is that he came in so big that they were like, Are you gonna have your hand in the ground? Or are you gonna be I mean yeah, he, he could have been that guy as yeah. a freshman. Yeah. And and, so, and he, he was still obviously very good at middle linebacker. You have to replace sure. that. And you know, I, I'd say Right now, Keith Brown is probably the most likely candidate. I think he's the most capable of the guys we know. I Jacobs agree. is a little bit more of an unknown, but it feels like they only bring that that sort of guy in to to start. Would would be my my guess. But I agree. I, I want to go to a couple other potential transfer topics here because, like I said, I think quarterback, running back, wide receiver. I do think they are set there, um, especially with the Tez Johnson addition. Like. Cozart and Dickey coming in. Ka- Ka- Kyler Casper's there. Like they got plenty of wide receivers. Sure. Cor- cornerback with Kyrie Jackson. I do think they're fine. I could see him adding a starter there, but I, I, I mean, tell look you, look at Gonzo last year. Holy, yeah, sh- I mean, yeah. Um, thanks for not letting that one slip out. That was close. Yeah, no, I, oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was that was. It's for cl- drama, uh, people. Come yeah, on. That was close to me having to go back and do some uh, editing? Selective, selective editing. Yeah, we What's don't that? we we don't want uh, that. I mean, late. Gonzo, I I did not see that coming at all. I don't know about you, but I will I, toot my own horn a little bit. I kind of did. Okay, that's great. I, I, I was I, very I high didn't know in Colorado coming. that well, but I and people said it. People said this guy's gonna be good. Right out of the gate, yep. they said one. They said he's going to be a starter, and then and I was like, okay, great. Well, that's awesome. He'll be good, obviously. But I didn't see what we saw there. I mean, he became the number one draft pick. Yeah, he's crowd. probably going to be a first. He's that's probably crazy. he's probably mid first to early second round draft yeah. pick this year. He's yeah. he's re- he was really really good. But I think between Triquez and they brought in Kyrie Jackson from Alabama and Dante Manning and Jaleel Florence, that's enough. Right that's enough bodies for me. I I love Jaleel Florence. I'm. Oh, yeah. Such oh, a huge fan of that guy. Yeah. I think he can. I think he can be the next Gonzo if he learns to use that physicality effectively and in a disciplined way. I think he can be really good. But anyway, we got a bit sidetracked there. I, I think where Oregon could still add a, a a transfer who you say you need to bring in a guy who can just be a solid starter linebacker. I don't think is likely, but I do think possible. But defensive line, safety, tight end. And, and the tight end one might surprise some people. But think about this. And this is dependent upon what, you know, Nicholas Harbor does because he might want to play tight end if the Ducks are able to go get him, which would be amazing. You do have Kenyon Sadiq coming in. But relying on a true freshman, if he at times, don't know what Cam McCormick is going to do. He has the potential to come back for two more years if he wants, but Cam McCormick has not announced anything at this point in time. And so... Let's say, like, let's say McCormick leaves. Your tight end room would then be T. Ferg, Patrick Herbert, and a true freshman in in Kenyon Sadiq, well, right. right? And they played four tight ends this year, and I think they should continue with that 14J package next year too. But you can't do that unless you have tight ends or H backs, and so that that's one position, Ryan, that I feel at the very least they could examine it and then defensive line for obvious reasons you need impact players and they're looking for them in the true freshman ranks with this recruiting class for sure but it doesn't mean you don't still examine your your portal options like that birch guy from south carolina i will probably talk about him extensively on monday if the ducks don't you know flip well i'd be talking about him if the ducks were able to get him from south carolina in the portal o- over the weekend but i i think that is I think those two positions, tight end, defensive line, if you're Dan Lanning and company, you're seriously considering going out to find someone who is a starting caliber player. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And at the same time, you're also like with the tight end position, you know, that Nicholas Harbor, man, that guy has been a fun guy to watch on that 247. Maybe you float the carrot. Well, hey, we're kind of light in this room. You know, again, I think I think there's certain things that you want to utilize. Right. And, and, And looking forward. I don't think Dan Lanning is at all scared to go into this year a little light and a little young. I have, I, I think that he's going to try to go into this year. He's going to, he, you are, like you said at the beginning of the show, he's got all these bases covered already. Some of the most important parts of the whole thing your starting queue, your wide receivers, your running backs, your offensive defensive line, you, your, your safety. You've got, you've got guys across the board you can trust. They're going to have some guys in the two deep. They're going to be pretty green. And they're going to have some guys that are going to be pretty young. 
but you got to coach them up and you got to get them experience. And why the hell not? Why not next year? You have those three games that you're four games that they can utilize, right? The first three games out of the gate, you're going to be able to get some time in Portland yep. state and be able to get some time, Hawaii, whatever. Yeah. And, and, and one thing I, I wanted to point out that, that you just brought up there is you can go and find the starting 22 guys, but more than just the starting 22 guys play, you've got injuries <laughs> or yeah. right long or short term, or just for like a couple plays, even you've got to be able to put guys out there where you don't have a significant drop off. Right. So when I look at the, the cornerback situation, for instance, you've got Triquez, you've got Dante Manning, Kyrie Jackson, Jaleel Florence. They will all play next year. They, they will like yeah. assu- assuming none of them transfer. And I just say that because you never know who's going to transfer and such. Sure. They will all play at different points in time because those three guys all played this year and Oregon lost one of their starters. And you know, you've got sub packages and injuries and there's just, mm-hmm. you, you need to have a lot of bodies there. You can't just look at, you know, the tight end room and say, well, you got T Ferg and Patrick Herbert. You're fine. Well, no, not, not fine. What if Herbert goes down with an injury? What if Tiefer goes down with an injury? That'd be terrible because I love Tiefer. I mean, I like Herbert too, but Tiefer is, I think, an NFL caliber guy. He's sure. he's he's yeah, a stud. Okay. He's uh, he's yeah. guy like he's he's been one of the guys who I've loved since the since before the season started. Gonzo was one. Tiefer was one. I was high in Bossa too. He, you know, was he didn't have the year I think he's capable of having potentially, but. I, I think defensive line you're looking there, but say I want to talk about the safety position with you because. Sure. There are a lot of bodies there, but there's there's not a lot of high level talent mixed with experience there, right? I think you have potential with Cody DeCambra or Tyler Turner. You yeah. would have had with Peyton Bowen. Like, like I'm DeCambria. I'm bummed we lost, but I'm I'm bummed we lost Bowen because he could have been oh, a day yeah. one starter. But oh, yeah. the other safeties that are there, and you would have had his mom with him. So I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 have. You have a bunch of guys in there like Steve Stevens, experience. Jamal yeah. Hill, experience. You lose Bennett Williams and, and the experience there. And you got potential with Turner and DeCamera. And you got J.J. Greenfield, experience. And Brian Addison, Addison. has got some experience. Addison I, looked I, pretty good when he was healthy this year. I, yeah, I think Addison was probably the best of the bunch. But again, look at all the different bodies we saw. And which of those guys could you plug and play in 2023 right now and say, yeah, he's going to be a high level all conference caliber starter. I, I think Addison's good. I don't know if he can get to that level. He's got the potential, but of the other guys, all of whom played a lot this year, I, I just think that's a position where you'd say if you can go find someone who could be an all Pac twelve honorable mention safety this year, you you'd do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I you know, I think we were saying the same thing, obviously, uh, you know, throughout the whole time. I mean, we were saying the kind of that same thing last year about maybe Jamal Hill. We thought maybe he was going to be the guy that was going to have the breakout year. Um, you know, you and he was about, o- he was okay. Sure, we he talked about okay. you know Julio. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure. Talk about Julio Florence. You know, and I think he had a pretty pretty good bowl game. You know, people were excited about Julio Tucker as well. You know, so it's like there's guys who you're also kind of thinking, okay, well maybe maybe just there's going to be another opportunity for these guys as they continue to progress. And it's not a bad thing to graduate guys. It's not a bad thing to leave guys out in the transfer portal if you're bringing in quality recruits. We've said this for years now that. We're talking about the better the recruit, the earlier they're going to play. And they're going to put pressure on these guys immediately. So um, I'm excited, man. Trajan Williams, kid from Portland. I'm excited to see. Uh, yep, Jefferson you know, like, High School yeah, kid. Yeah. So, you know, and yeah, you, you're right about J.J. Greenfield. You know, he came back and, you know, uh, without the scholarship and, uh, you know, put 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 a lot of really good plays out there. And uh, pretty solid early, early in the Holiday Bowl. If you want to see what we're talking yeah. about with J.J., Made yeah. a couple of really nice plays early in the Holiday Bowl. Helped get North Carolina to a fourth down situation. Yep. Had yep. had a couple decent coverage moments. I, I just think that position group, you know, may, maybe they've got a young guy they think is ready, right? Maybe it's Trajan Williams. Maybe one of Turner or DeCambra are, are ready. Those were all four-star recruits. But I, I just don't think anybody's job at that end, including Brian Addison, who I, I thought is, you know, maybe the most explosive athlete of, of the yeah. bunch. You know, and at six and, five, and, he's really and, rangy. Yeah, as a former receiver, right? Yeah. So it's like that's the other thing. It's like you never know who these guys are. You know, you put them in the DB room, you see how they go. Maybe there's a depth chart issue. Put them over at the safety. Maybe they're on the boundary. You know, maybe they're on the field side. Whatever the case may be, there's a role for you to play. Maybe it's a certain package. 
You know, I loved that when they when they started to roll out the heavy package for more of the run attack and they bring out the heavy safeties. They run for the more of the lighter safeties when they run for the pass attack. When you had to do like the Mike Leach air raid and then the next week you had to go play, you know, against Stanford or whatever. And, you know, you have to kind of uh, 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 have different uh, a wide variety of different personnel groups just to be able to go through your per, your schedule. Talk about 22. You can't have 22. You got to have 52. You got to have as many guys as possible <laughs> yeah. because you have to have variety. And that's the key concept for the Ducks. Not to mention the fact that you have depth issues with injuries and everything else we know of, but you have to have the next man up. We saw what happens. Look at the end of the year when these guys go down. Every single one of the Pac-12 quarterbacks that got injured lost. All of them. Cam rising. The team fell apart immediately. Mm -hmm. Caleb Williams. See ya. Had the nails done and everything. He was toast. Couldn't run around with the hamstring. Okay. Bo Nix. God damn. Didn't even seem like he was that injured. Nope. Done. At, right in that one, in that game, in the game that he got injured. Right. Look at the beeves. The beeves. If they could have had a quarterback, they could almost goddamn undefeated this year. Or goddamn. Sorry. Go. But I mean, seriously, it's like you're, you're going to one play away. And your whole season could be a wrap. So, you know, the, the it, it, it's a dicey situation. You have to have guys in the two deep. And you rely so heavily on your quarterback that that's why I would love to see Ty Thompson stay. He hasn't said he's going to go to the transfer. Everybody in the world thought he was going to transfer. And all of a sudden it's like, well, he's still here. Well, let's see where he's at at the end of the spring ball. He's still here. Maybe we'll be because he knows even got to know one play away. You're the next man up. And who, who would be the next man up over him? Nova said a, 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 a true, a true, a true freshman. freshman. Yeah. Or a walk on a guy who's not even a scholarship guy. Who else is in the room? Who's scholarship? Right. I mean, it, it, you're, you're getting to a point where, you know, especially this year, because there, the, you're saying the roster was so bloated. Cristobal had just over recruited for years and he had stacked that thing so full. And then COVID year, everybody gets the extra. So many guys, Cam McCormick's getting extra years on top of years on top of years. I mean, it's difficult to manage all these guys and it's still bloated. You're still probably 10, 15. It feels like over. So it's like you still are hopeful these guys are going to hit the transport. And every guy that does hit the transport, everybody sheds a tear for because once a duck, always a duck. And we love the guys. But at the same time, next man up, we got a bunch of guys in here. I mean, this recruiting class is continuing to grow. I think it's at now like 28 uh, it's the letters of intent. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look it I mean, up real quick. The real signing day is a month from now. They're still on the recruiting. Well, the yeah, you know, I think I think the early one has kind of become the, the real really signing has. day. 28, really 28 guys have signed their, their letter of intent. That's, yeah, that's a crazy. big class. And then that's how many transfers were? Six? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, six. That's 34. Six? Yeah, 30, 30, 34 new players are going to be in... <laughs> in Oregon's room as of, as of now. And they're still going after guys. Yes. They're still going so after it's guys. Like, it's all. And when guys return, everybody's happy too. But then the coaches has got to be like, damn, okay. Another one return. Okay. You know, you, you got to play these kind of mind games. It's a difficult situation, but yeah. They're, they're, hey, still better than most, right? Still better off than most coming off a good bowl win, having a good successful season, looking ahead for another good successful season. Yes, we have competition in the conference, which is also great, but it makes it more nerve wracking. I get it. But, you know, next year I want to go to Rice Eccles. I'm, I'm excited as hell for that game. So let's go. Well, maybe I'll uh, meet you there. Maybe we could bring Ooh. maybe we could bring bring forth a better result than whatever whatever <laughs> happened last time that we need not go into. But we need to always bring back my man Ryan Winter at Sports Chat five hundred three on Twitter and on YouTube. Ryan, it's always a fun fun time, and I know the people appreciate it as well. And we humbly thank you for your wily veteran service. Thank you. And if I can please plug a little bit, you need to get yourself some uh, ESPN plus. You need to check out my man, Spencer on the call does a phenomenal job. And I'm telling you, you and your play by play, uh, or your color guy do a great job. I got a couple of really good analysts, good, really, good team, really good analysts, good team. Uh, so kudos to you, man. Like I said, I'm very proud of you. We've been doing this for a year now proud of how you've grown this channel and grown this brand thank and, you uh, the sky is the limit my man so. i hope i i hope so just just trying to be better and always appreciate you and always appreciate you coming well, on the show I appreciate you and been. i appreciate all of you who listen to and watch the show thank you so much see you next time have a wonderful rest of your day have a great weekend everybody and go ducks